Just like the street lights lit this time Like a fire in a blaze Gotta burn it right, down here we are, folks. Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how Reporting from South Africa. Dumela. Saubona. Redak. Servus. Bienvenue. Bonjour. Greetings, folks, from around the world. This is Chris live in central Pennsylvania. Welcome back to the program. It is Tuesday, March 26th, 2024. Apologies for the slightly tardy start of this program. I was busy in the video recording studio preparing the next video. This one's about the visit to Iranya by a black journalist from the United Kingdom and his allegations against it. Today, he penned an op-ed piece in The Guardian, a pity party whining about how people criticized him based on his skin color and his wheelchair-bound status. Now, neither of those legitimately criticize the man, but his suspect journalistic standards are certainly something to criticize him about. So we'll talk more about that. That video will be finished editing after this broadcast. I'll upload it, so stay tuned for that, and please go watch it and share it with folks. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, once again, uh, the pity party over race. So back to today's broadcast. Keith Alderson is here from the UK. And once again, my timestamps are not there. Stop doing that. Okay. There we go. Keith, um, Francis Scott Key, the bridge destroyed, was named after him. Yes, he did write the national anthem. <clears throat> it's correct. Mr. Orban, so sorry to hear in the tragic bridge collapse. My thoughts are with all... Yeah, no, it's it's horrific, Pierre. I've been on that bridge hundreds of times. Um, that bridge going across from Anne Arundel County into Dundalk uh, in the southern part of Baltimore, where the Port Authority is located, where I picked up my vehicle and dropped my vehicle off for shipment to and from Europe, one station there. Plus, uh, I had family living over in Essex, not a good neighborhood. And I've been across that bridge many, many times coming back from uh, Philadelphia or New York City, coming down that side of Baltimore to avoid the west side and all the traffic the jams over there. Yeah, so uh, horrific to see that. It collapsed like a, a house of cards, like a Jenga puzzle, pulling it out. What a tr horrible situation. At this hour, at least six people still missing and unaccounted for, uh, and that does not bode well. The water was in the 40 degrees temperature range last night. That's a little bit above freezing. And the current, not to mention the debris from the bridge, uh, deadly obstacles. Um, there was a construction crew in the center of the bridge, just to the right of where that ship crashed into the the uh, pillar that holds up the bridge. And uh, the, presumably those people may have been lost. Um, rescue efforts continue with the Coast Guard and with Baltimore Fire Department and police authorities out there trying to find people. At least two people were rescued, one of whom is at least still alive. Uh, there are some media reports that one person passed away. I hope that's not true. But it does not look very promising for those who have been subjected to this horrific situation. Uh, the ship, the Dolly, is owned by Maersk, the largest shipping company in the world, of course, based in Denmark. But apparently they leased the ship out to another company. It was headed to, I believe, Singapore. That ship, through the ninth largest port in the United States, the Port of Baltimore, where the most motor vehicles are shipped in and out of the country, 850,000 motor vehicles shipped in and out of that port last year alone in 2023. 
It's also our second largest coal terminal, shipping coal around the world from the United States. This will have devastating consequences to America's coal industry already under assault by environmental wackos and hate wankers on the political left. It is a shocking development and unbelievably horrific situation. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all those who are involved in this in some way or other. The rescuers whose lives are in jeopardy themselves, dealing with the dangerous collapse and debris out there. Who knows how long the port of Baltimore will be shut down now? This is absolute insanity. I don't know if there's a space at Sparrows Point to set up a docking station for other ships to bring things in or an alternate place further down on the peninsula there. I don't know, but this is devastating to Maryland, to the city of Baltimore, one of the earliest cities in the United States and the place of my birth, the city of Baltimore. It is depressing to say the very least that such a thing can happen. Um, it is unbelievable. How can ships that are not ship worthy like that be out in the sea? And these container ships are all over the world. And this is a cautionary tale for those of us who live near seaports and rely on tunnels and bridges to get through and over waterways. Pretty shocking development here, folks. There is a much larger bridge, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, located down just outside Annapolis, further down the Chesapeake Bay. And that one, of course, runs over to the eastern shore. That one um, is a massive bridge. Uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge is much smaller. It's 1.6 miles in total length about 1.4 miles of the span where it's elevated there. It's, uh, wow, an unbelievable story, folks. Thank you for your thoughts and prayers. Uh, Myra, Teresa, Polly, the brains behind the operation, Lorraine Slabbert here, Nick Muller, Boyd Boer, outfiltrationist says, good evening. Welcome to you. Garrett is here, Val Cooper. And who else we got there? Uh, Vilma Rasmus, Marilyn Brokenshaw. Maybe the Baltimore ship had a South African submarine driver at the helm. But yeah, good point there. Uh, and Patrick is here as well. And uh, Erica, sorry to hear about the news. Well, thank you all so much for that. Lodi Monday, I missed you, and RJ is here as well. Yeah, here are the Colonel's Bayesian analysis of our world events. What is that, Bayesian? I don't know what that means. Anyway, folks, uh, there you have it. Um, that's what's going on. We have news around the world, of course, as usual. South Africa, Africa, Senegal has a new leader. And, of course, the United States. We're going to talk about Donald Trump and his newfound wealth. The man is now worth another $5 billion as the value of Truth Social skyrockets on its initial public authoring. Wow, I don't know how soon he can sell stock, but the sooner he can sell it, the better off he is. And the ludicrous judgments. I'm actually going to go to the process of reading an op-ed today, which I don't normally do. I've done it a few times recently. But, you know, I want to start with that op-ed right now before we get into it, okay? This is about Donald Trump. So thanks for the 60 people currently here. Be sure to hit the like button before you go anywhere. Don't run off. Thank you for being here. This is a huge sacrifice for me. I don't make money doing this. I do spend a lot of my time. And I do appreciate the interaction of a global audience. Uh, and that's pretty much all I get from it is that that's the reward. So thank you for being here. But hit the like button. That was easy. Um, if YouTube is honest and looks at the percentage of likes versus views, uh, they will find that historically my live broadcast have one of the highest ratios of likes to viewership. It's absolutely stunning and amazing. Thank you all so much for that. Yeah, it is devastating news. Absolutely devastating news. So let me get to this op-ed that I want to read to you now. Uh, this one I think is by Charlie Kirk. Not exactly on my Christmas list of people. It appears in the Washington Times. Is it Charlie Kirk? It's Char Charles Hurt. Excuse me, not Charlie Kirk. Okay, so Charles Hurt. I'm okay with him. On Donald Trump's Judgment Day, Letitia James gets spanked. All right, so this is an op-ed piece. This is not my view. I will share my comments afterwards. It turns out Donald Trump's legal instincts are as good as his political instincts, which are as good as his marketing instincts, all of which are as perfect as a Ukrainian phone call. <laughs> In what should have been the worst day for Trump's career, Monday turned out to be one of his best. You got to hand it to the guy. He's got the Midas touch. Maybe that's why everything he builds, including his toilet fixtures, are gold. He walked into a Manhattan courtroom facing fines of nearly $500 million, actually $564 million, for what was expected to spark a fire sale of his properties. The media staked out his buildings to watch the padlocks come off. Others predicted the New York authorities would seize his bank accounts. Mr. Trump's own lawyers last week said he could not afford to pay the massive fines. Then Mr. Trump contradicted them by saying he had the cash, but he was saving it for his presidential campaign. His best options, according to even supporters inside Trump world, were to hand over the keys to Trump Tower or declare bankruptcy. It was a high stakes game that would crush any normal person, but Mr. Trump is not a normal person. He thrived. A New York appellate court rejected the absurd and arbitrary $454 million fine, which was due yesterday, slashing it by more than 60% and giving him 10 more days to pay it. Mr. Trump immediately agreed to pay the $175 million so they could get on with appealing the whole ridiculous case. The only fire sale on Monday, it turned out, was on the fine levied against Mr. Trump. In the standoff between the New York court system and Donald Trump, the New York court system blinked. 
on Judgment Day for Mr. Trump, New York Attorney General Letitia James got spanked. But it's worth noting that the $175 million bond that Trump agreed to pay is no less absurd or arbitrary than the original $454 million, as was the amount by which he got it slashed. The dollar amounts are tied to nothing. The whole case is about damages, and there were no damages, said Trump after leaving the courthouse. Instead, the whole case brought by the Biden and his thugs is about election interference, he declared, as he swatted away a fly. That's kind of funny. He swatted away a fly. For those of us who had the decency not to go to law school, it can all be terribly confusing. It isn't to me. The fine is supposed to be a bond, which is designed to keep a defendant from fleeing while the courts figure out the case. For years now, Democratic politicians have run campaigns against cash bonds for even the most violent criminals. Larry Krasner in Philadelphia releases rapists and murderers back in neighborhoods where they go and commit the same crimes on the same day. In New York City, they release people from violent crimes every single day. The police don't even bother arrest people anymore. Democrats don't believe in bail bonds. However, they've been against them for even the most violent criminals. That helps explain why cities run by Democrats are a washing crime. Philadelphia, Atlanta, Chicago, New York, D.C., Los Angeles, Seattle. The list goes on and on. Vice President Kamala Harris is so opposed to bonds, you may recall, that she raised money to get criminals out of jail during the riots of 2020. Finally, however, Democrats have found a bond that they can get behind. So long as it jails or bankrupts Donald Trump, their top political enemy, who they realize is going to beat them in the next election. The bond... Now, folks, listen to this. Remember Bernie Bernie Madoff, the man who built people out of billions of tens of billions of dollars? The bond for mega fundraiser Bernie Madoff, who built tens of thousands of victims out of tens of billions of dollars, was $10 million. For Mr. Trump, who cheated no one out of anything, it was 50 times as high. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? The figure is still pointless given that the vast majority of Trump's wealth is tied up in high-profile properties. Only the most extreme cases of Trump derangement syndrome lead someone to believe that Mr. Trump, the most famous person in the world, is going to flee the country with Trump Tower in a suitcase along with several golf courses and his carry-on luggage. (laughs) Exactly. I felt compelled to read that. Bernie Madoff, tens of billions of dollars of securities fraud, destroyed people's life savings and their total investments, impoverished them. And his bond was $10 million. Donald Trump, there are no victims. Deutsche Bank made the loan after currying Donald Trump, the Trump Organization's business. Deutsche Bank made the loan. The Trump Organization paid the loan off on time with interest. Deutsche Bank made money and got more clients because they could boast that the Trump Organization was part of their portfolio. Who is the victim? No one was denied a loan that went to Trump instead. No one. There is no victim here. This is beyond ludicrous. This is an abuse of the judicial system. This is Sovietesque. We are in communist Cuba. We are in Prague after the Prague Spring of 1968. We are in Budapest after 1956. We are in Germany, East Germany, the Deutsche Democratic Republic in 1953. We are in the Soviet Union throughout its bizarre history. We were in China during the Cultural Revolution. We are in North Korea today, where the rule of law only applies to the idiots that run the government, not to their political opponents. This is not democracy. This is not justice. This is not reality. This is animal farm. Some pigs are more important than other pigs. Sick indeed. Twisted beyond belief. And if you're wondering why I'm running for office, this is why. This is why. This is why. Well, only a handful of independent candidates have made it onto the ballot in South Africa. And those are my opening monologue comments. (laughs) I could start doing that, opening monologue. So just like Bill O'Reilly and Tucker Carlson did my opening monologue. So only a handful of independent candidates made it onto the ballot after the Independent Electoral Commission vetted the list. Wow, isn't that interesting? Despite an overhaul in electoral law to allow independent candidates to contest the elections, only seven made it onto the National Assembly seats. Wow. For the first time, South Africans will vote on three ballots to ensure independent candidates are catered for in the Constitutional Court ruled after they ruled that it was allowed to contest the national and provincial elections. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. The general election on May 29th will see 14,662 nominated candidates contest for 887 seats in the National Assembly and the nine provincial legislatures. Wow. That's going to be a handful. Good luck with that, folks. Very complicated. But if you vote in Pennsylvania in the 92nd Legislative District, all you got to do is look for the 92nd Legislative District. There are five candidates. The best one is, of course, named Wyatt. And you select that one right in the middle of the candidates. Make it happen.
<laughs> handle it, Roy. Handle it, handle it. While the Afghan National Congress, embroiled in a dispute with the MK party, loses its case. M. Kotwi Sisue will appear on the ballot according to the courts, and that will rock the ANC. Despite the ANC welcoming the court's ruling to declare the former president, Jacob Zuma's M. Kotwi Sisue party lawful and constitutional, it prepares to engage in legal battles with them over the name and the logo. In a statement issued by, as a substitute for the now canceled briefing on the court outcomes, the ANC expressed objection to the use of Mkonto Isizuoi logo and the name by the party. This comes as both parties preparing to go head-to-head -head in the Durban High Court, this time on the issue of the trademark. But MK will appear on the ballot. In a major defeat to the ruling African National Congress, and this means, as I predicted, that the ANC will be fortunate to get 20% of the vote in Kwanzaa and Natal. This is a shocking development for a party that was busy murdering 20,000 Nkata members in the 1980s and early 1990s with necklacing and assassinations in order to gain political ascendancy. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, the ANC is now working its way back to being a minor party. There is a chance that the ANC could even be smaller than the Democratic Alliance in KZN. I'm not predicting that, but it's a possibility. It is a distinct possibility. Wow. Here we go again. Fair is a medieval carnival, especially in blue cities. Yeah. Ronaldo's name is on the national list. Um, I haven't seen the list. I keep looking for it. I can't find it anywhere. Uh, we expect Ronaldo's name to be on the list. So that means Ronaldo will be a member of parliament if they get enough votes. Listen to Biz News. Conference 6 held last week. Gave a pretty good wide-ranging picture of SA politics. Um, didn't see that. Mr. Booty Judge is reportedly on his way. I'm sure he'll claim a national emergency. That's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> All the government red tape and have the harbor open three days and the bridge rebuilt in six months. Not going to happen. Mark my words, election in KZN will not be peaceful. Well, Arctic, that's not exactly a prescient prediction there, Senior Von Rendsburg, Nostradamus. Yeah, I think we can all pretty much say that. But um, our arguments are cogent and straightforward. Yeah, well, the MK using big words, mm -hmm. yeah, or ANC using big words. They accept the outcome of the case against, look at that, look at that. there you go. There's uh, Jay-Z. Well, that's a pretty cool looking shirt, except for that ugly mug on it. The rest of look at the camouflage as if they're actually warriors. <laughs> ANC says accepts the ruling of the electoral court dismissing its case seeking deregistration of the MK party, but it reiterated that it stood by its case, brought before the court questioning how they flouted the law when it registered the MK party led by former President Jacob Zuma. Well, that's because they're angry at the ANC. Get over it. Well, folks, the average salary in South Africa right now is a surprising 26,000 Rand plus 26,894 Rand per month was the average salary from August to November of last year. There you go. That's a lot higher than many of us thought it was, but we're only talking about a little over $1,000. About $1,500 a month is the average salary for those who actually work. That's not a lot of money. Oof. Well, a looming public sector strike from angry government workers who are unhappy getting a pay rise. They get a 4.7% pay rise already approved, and they're going to go strike because of that. Wow. Selfish little bastards. Yep. South Africa see disruptions in public services in the policing correctional services sector. Oh, that's why we need more Tabo Bester jailbreaks as the representative unions push back against a 4.7% wage hike already approved for next month. They already have it. They have a 4.7% pay rise coming next month. And they're not happy, so they're going to strike. They already agreed to this. They're going to strike. Well, show us you're not hypocrites, says the African National Congress when it comes to the Democratic Alliance of the Western Cape. We want to see your deployment records. <laughs> you knew this one was coming. We've already talked about this. The ANC uh, trying to turn the tables on the Democratic Alliance. <laughs> ANC Western Cape submitted to a PIA, that's a, a, a um, Freedom of Information Act equivalent release, Application to compel the DA to hand over what it calls the party's cater deployment records. Earlier this year, the DA secured access to a treasure trove of documents from ANC's corrupt practices. <laughs> ANC Western Cape wants the DA to hand over all its deployment records, even those dating back to 2009. Well, that's pretty cheeky, given that the ANC claimed that, well, you don't have any records from 2009 all the way up to 2017. We just couldn't find them. So if you can't find them, that's pretty cheeky of you to ask for your opponents to provide theirs. Of course, they have them. They just won't release them. And nobody's been found in contempt of court in the African National Congress. Nobody's been sent to jail. Hmm. Well, 42 election candidates appear on multiple lists. What's going on there? Electoral Commission South Africa found 42 candidates appear on multiple party lists. 
It involved 39 different political parties. One candidate was nominated as independent and also appears on the party candidate list. <laughs> it's craven desire for political party. Wow. A total of 4,323 candidates are nominated to contest for seats in parliament. And 2,596 have been nominated to contest for provincial seats. 6,743 have been nominated to contest seats in the provincial legislatures for independents and party candidates. Hmm. Well, there you go. There you go, folks. Hmm. Well, the election will be interesting. Damelin, City Varsity, and other colleges are deregistered by Blade in Zamande. Yes, the Minister of Higher Education. Uh, higher. <laughs> when people zoll, <laughs> they roll that zoll. Blade and Zamande, the communist, has slammed the EdCor group for inaction after the group's Damelin, City Varsity, Akesa City Campus, and Lyceum colleges were deregistered by the department last week. Well, we cannot have private Education interfering with the communist indoctrination of our students at UCT, Vitz, UNISA. We must have the communist indoctrination from the ANC run government institutions. Can't have any private institutions out there. Now, to be fair, these institutions apparently did not report properly. So they are accused of poor quality of teaching and learning, <laughs> okay. lack of proper administrative support, poorly qualified staff, corruption and bribery. Lack of response for requests for refunds, lack of professionalism, exploitation of poor students, non-payment of staff salaries, and underpayment of staff salaries. It sounds like the African National Congress. <laughs> poor quality of teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. Lack of proper administrative support. Poor quality staff. Corruption by... This is like reading the, 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 the manifesto of the ANC. All of this describes the African National Congress. Yeah, they use it to delist private for-profit institutions <laughs> that are competing with their corrupt indoctrination machine at UCT, Vitz, Matis, and all these other schools. Yep. So here's Debrink says, we are going to finish what we started here, despite all the challenges. He's not going to be a member of parliament. Yep. Schwane Mayor Silius Brink will stay on as executive mayor, this is despite ranking highly in the DA's candidate selection process. He wants to keep his promise to residents and the DA-led coalition will turn the city around. Big announcement, I'm staying on as mayor of Shawnee City to finish what we started as a coalition, restore the finances, build energy independence, and improve services in the face of caters, tenderpreneurs, and everyone else who would prefer Joe Berg-like leadership in Shawnee. Ah, so your spring lays it on the line there. What a fascinating gentleman. I interviewed him, of course. Now we turn our attention, ladies and gentlemen, to the race hustling documentary in which a poor, crippled, black UK journalist was traumatized by his visit to Aranya, apparently a prison penal colony located somewhere in a remote, vast desert stretches of the Northern Cape in which only black people feel oppressed. Hmm. Stay tuned for the Netflix special. <laughs> uh, we're talking, of course, about Ade Adapetien, um, who went to Aranya and then uh, filmed a documentary, violated journalistic standards, attempted to film people at a religious service, which is not allowed. I mean, but I don't see him complaining about going to Amish country or going to a mosque and being prohibited from filming there. But he's upset that people of faith who are Christians and happen to be devoid or insufficiently pigmented uh, scare him, even though no one ever threatened him in any way. Apparently he has post-traumatic stress disorder. Visiting a whites only town in South Africa was difficult. <laughs> even sadder was the racist backlash in the UK. I expect criticism in my documentary, but the racist trolling and support for an apartheid stronghold was truly awful. Excuse me? Apartheid stronghold? What apartheid stronghold? There isn't a single policy from the corporation that runs Aranya advocating apartheid. Not one. It's an organization that promotes cultural unity for Afrikaans-speaking Dutch Calvinists in South Africa. I can't live there. And Ade might not have noticed this, but I'm a person of color. I'm pink. I'm not black, but I'm not, I'm not allowed to live there. My goodness. The morning after my most recent documentary, Whites Only, Ade's Extremist Adventure. Yeah, extremist bullshit. Uh, aired on Channel 4, I got a stream of concerned phone calls and WhatsApp messages from friends, family members, and work colleagues asking if I was okay. 
Oh, at first I was confused. It wasn't until they started talking about social media that I understood why they were all so worried. I pretty much removed myself from Twitter a few months ago. It was just becoming a place of polarized conversations that made the platform toxic and close to unusable. No, it's actually become much safer and cleaner for those of us who actually want to contribute to the body of knowledge there. It isn't the hate-wanking leftist scumbag, vile, uh, blech, nasty platform that it was when Jack Dorsey ran it. He said, I know there'll be extreme reaction to my documentary as sadly the topic of race, especially in connection with South Africa, will probably always be provocative in our lifetime. Yes, because race hustlers like you make it provocative. Aranya should not be a tale of race. It should be a tale of a community that works together and succeeds, kind of like bees or ants. They work as a community and they succeed. But no, he went there with a preconceived notion that these people are racist. He said it himself. He said it himself. Yep. And then he talks about um, uh, the result of his document is an online army of haters who criticize me for being me. People can't see beyond the color of my skin. So anything I do or say will be wrong. I receive comments like these. Listen, Ade, grow up. Put your big bow points on. Take your diapers off. The nappies are inappropriate. Seriously, seriously. I get called a racist all the time by leftist hate wankers who don't know what they're talking about and just lie. The scumbag, hate wanking, self-pleasuring, moron, dipshit, who lived in Amsterdam, who attacked me with false claims and destroyed my relationship with Nas Bota. Grow up. You're in media. It's what people do. Stop looking for sympathy because you're in a wheelchair and because you're black. You are welcome to be called out for your conduct, which was not appropriate for journalists in this instance. I went to the... Sutu Cultural Village in Golden Gate Park in South Africa with no preconceived notions about the Sutu people, although I know a lot about them. I went there. I was given a tour by a guide. We filmed it. I represented them well. I didn't call the Sutu isolationist. I didn't call them separatist. I didn't call the Sutu Cultural Village an apartheid village. No white people live there. No Afrikaners live there. Only Sutu. No Zulu. No Kosa. No Venda. No Tswana. Just Sutu. Does that make them apartheid? No, it doesn't. This guy's a moron. <clears throat> Unbelievable. And this appears on YouTube. So first off, um, it was in The Guardian. This is op-ed, so you can see it. I don't want you to miss it. I don't think I showed it on the screen. There he is. Visiting a whites-only town in South Africa was difficult. Yeah. And then he whines about the backlash. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so here it is. This appears in from the Telegraph. You, Yahoo's covering this. A black man enters a whites-only town in South Africa. What could possibly go wrong? The man in question is Ade Adapitan, a former Paralympian turned presenter. In whites-only, he visited Aranya, a community set up by Afrikaners where the hillside is dotted with statues honoring the architects of apartheid. Aranya is in the Karoo Desert. Its population of 40 families now swelled to 3,000. Perspectives, that's, that's very misleading. 40 families, not 3,000 families. 3,000 people. Prospective residents are interviewed about their knowledge of Afrikaner traditions, language, Protestant faith. You don't have to be white to live there, but it helps. Now, that's honest, at least. If you're going to get under the skin of a place like this, you need a skilled observer and interviewer. My overriding thought was that Louis Thoreau should have been doing this. Then I discovered that he already had. In his younger days, he visited the Boer settlement in South Africa for an episode of Weird Weekends. Well, getting under the skin. Really? Is that what you want to do? Or do you just want to insult people? Turning your attention to West Africa, Nigeria's central bank has hiked interest rates to almost 25%. This is insane. Nigeria's economy is in trouble, folks. 24.75% is a battle sky high inflation and currency crisis. Things are going badly in Nigeria. The central bank of Nigeria announced that its main monetary policy rate would rise to 24.75 from 22.75 in its second consecutive hike after February's 400 basis point increase. Not looking good there, folks. Nigeria's economy in a lot of trouble. Uh, good news, though, in Nigeria were 200 Nigerians who were abducted. The school hostages were released a couple days ago. Over 200 students and staff abducted by gunmen from a school in northern Nigeria earlier in the month have been released. The kidnapping, which took place back on March 7th in Kiriga, which I reported on, uh, was the first mass kidnapping since 2021. The Nigerian army also deserves special commendation for showing that with courage, determination, commitment, criminal elements can be degraded and security restored in our communities. 
Congratulations on that. Nigeria's defense chief blames poor intelligence for the failures of Nigeria's army. Yep, says bad intel hinders fights on kidnappings. Nigeria's defense chief, General Chris Musa, said on Monday the military is being fed bad intelligence by informants hampering the fight against armed kidnapping gangs who continue to conduct or abduct students and residents in the north of the country. The informants make the troops go elsewhere, and when they get there, they meet nothing and allow the bandits to commit acts of criminality. So what you have is not informants, but collaborators with the terrorists. You should be prosecuting collaborators. You shouldn't be paying them as informants, you morons. Do you not know how to run human operations, human intelligence operations? Former Senegalese Prime Minister concedes defeat. Mackie Sales' hand-picked successor fails to win the race in Senegal. Yep, a day after the presidential vote. Former Senegalese Prime Minister Amadou Ba has conceded defeat to leading opposition figure Basaru Diomaye Faye in West African countries' presidential elections. With regard to provisional ballots and awaiting official proclamation, I congratulate President Basaru Diomaye Dakara Faye for his victory in the first round, the 62-year-old Ba said in a statement. I wish him lots of success and success for the well-being of the Senegalese people. Now, early unofficial results showed Faye with a clear lead of 57% of votes, while Ba came in with just 31%. According to independent Senegalese radio station Futur's Medias said, wow, congratulations to Faye who has won that race in Senegal. Now this comes on the heels of Mackie Sale postponing this election, then being overruled by the courts and setting a date. We finally have resolution. This was supposed to take place in February. Senegal's elections have now been resolved. Mackie Sale has spent 12 years there, leading the country in massive amount development with new railroads, ports, facilities, economic progress. We'll leave office now. And there you have it. We have a new president. Japan, turning further away from its long-held tradition of pessimism, is now looking at selling weapons. Japan to sell fighter jets and the latest break from post-war pacifist ideals. This according to the British Broadcasting Propaganda Outlet. Japan's cabinet has approved the export of new fighter jets and it's developing with the UK and Italy in the latest move away from its pacifist policies. It eased arms export rules to allow jets to be sold to countries that Japan has signed defense pacts with and where there's no ongoing conflict. They pledged to double military spending by 2027, citing threats posed by China and North Korea. And ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, these threats by China and North Korea are genuine. Genuine, 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 genuine. Well, an extraordinary thing. The United States break with Israel on UN ceasefire vote triggers Netanyahu rage, and it should. The Biden regime has betrayed Israel and undermined the only democratically elected republic in the Middle East. The abstention of the United States signals a widening divide between the White House and Israel's current government, the most right-wing in its history, and nearly six months into a war with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Wow, that's what they say. There's Linda Thomas-Greenfield abstaining. Wow, that's a disgrace. That is a picture I should capture and we should never forget. Linda Thomas-Greenfield has betrayed, has betrayed Israel, has betrayed democracy, has betrayed representative governance, and stands with terrorists. The United States stands with terrorists. We stand with Hamas, apparently, who invaded Israel and launched a war on October 7th, 2023. Apparently, the United States, under Joe Biden's regime, sides with the anti-Semitic world. This is distressing and disgraceful. As a consequence, Israel cancels a visit to D.C. Tensions between the United States and Israel exposed today when, or yesterday, when Washington stood aside and allowed the UN Security Council to pass a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The U.S. decision to abstain on the vote prompted Israel's prime minister to cancel a scheduled trip to the U.S. by two of his top advisors. Yep. The U.S. had previously vetoed similar resolutions calling for a ceasefire. Its position evolved last week when a Friday put forward a ceasefire resolution that was tied to hostages. Well, now we've abandoned Israel. But we're all in with Ukraine. That's right, folks. Let's support Ukraine. Let's support Joe Biden's proxy war to cover up his crimes in Ukraine. Let's keep doing that. Yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check out this guy, man. He looks like something from a horror film. There's a tank crew member in Ukraine. Look at that. Ukraine's battered army grapples with growing troop shortage. They're running out of Ukrainians to send to their death on behalf of Joe Biden and Jens Stoltenberg. Yep. Yeah, this story by Nikita Nikolenko and Ian Lovett in the Wall Street Journal. 
Ukraine's armed forces desperately need fresh troops to hold back mass Russian offenses, but political dithering is leaving frontline units threadbare. Wait a second. I thought the reason Ukraine was losing is because the Republicans were holding up money for Ukraine. Oh, it's because they don't need troops. Hmm. Well, there's a bill aimed at expanding the draft. The proposed change to the age of conscription would be lowered to 25 from 27. Soldiers will be eligible to leave the military after three years of service and punishments will be imposed for men who avoid registering for the draft. Hmm. Yeah, we're struggling to lower the age of 25, but you can join the U.S. military when you're 17. <laughs> what kind of morons are they? No wonder they don't have any troops. Anyway. Well, folks, the border wall is going up. That's right. The wall is being constructed even as we speak at this very moment. No, 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 not the southern border, not Mexico. I'm not talking about that. No, no, we can't have that. That's racist, racist. No, no, I'm talking about that border. No, no, I'm talking about the border between the Dominican Republic and Haiti. The Dominican Republic, of course, that country famously, if you look at sat photographs, satellite photographs, you'll see a verdant green landscape on one half of the island Hispanola and on the other island, is it Hispanola? No, or is that Cuba? That's Cuba. Anyway, but the island, the other half where Haiti's at, denuded because the Haitians are rapacious and they just consume the entire island. Whereas the Dominicans, much more responsible human beings and shows the difference between the poor governments and totalitarian fascist dictatorships of Haiti and the democratically elected governments of the Dominican Republic. The other border wall going up south of the United States, the Dominican Republic constructing a wall to keep out Haitians as chaos engulfs a neighboring country. It's the latest phase in centuries of bitter division here. Yep, look at that. Pretty impressive. You can see yeah, it is the island of Hispanola. I was correct. <laughs> yep, border wall there. Haiti is denuded on the left. There's no satellite photograph here, unfortunately. There's pictures of chaos there in Port-au-Prince on March 20th. There's a border wall and its guard tower. That's pretty serious there. Yep. Dominican Republic. So here's the GDP per... This is the, Folks, this is the same freaking island in the Caribbean. Same island. Same island. Same resources on the same island at the same latitude. Gross domestic product per capita. Haiti, 1995, about $1,000 per year. Haiti, 2024, about $900 per year. Dominican Republic, 1995, $3,500 per year. Today, $8,500 per year. Look at this chart. A little hard to see on your screen there, but wow, what a difference. Wow, unbelievable. So that's what happens. You build a wall, you keep people out. Mm-hmm. They can do that there, but apparently it's not racist to do it for the Dominican Republic, just for the United States. Well, as I mentioned earlier, folks, this horrific situation in Baltimore where a bridge was knocked down, the Francis Scott Key Bridge was just shocking. Let me pull up the video for that on this very quickly here, folks, so we can take a look at it. Give me a second. <clears throat> um, that's not what I want. Download's what I want. So, okay, let me find it. So where's that video at? There's, I got several videos here. So this is the one we're going to want to see. Is this the one? 22 seconds, yeah, this one's, yeah, this is the one we want. Hang on. Here's the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, built in 1977 at a cost of $110 million, a bridge which I have traversed dozens, if not hundreds of times. This is the Francis Scott Key Bridge at 1.28 a.m. and 44 seconds in the port of Baltimore. You can see all the lights over there at the terminal, and this is the Dolly ship owned by Maersk, and this is what happens. That's absolutely insane. Look at that. Wow. Absolutely insane, folks. Absolutely insane. And there were people on that bridge. There was a road crew working on the bridge when that collapse occurred. Let me get this other one up here very quickly here. So this one's a little bit longer here. Okay. So this one was from Stream Live. That's they provided this video. So here you see the ship and watch the lights go out on the ship in just a moment. Look at the cars and trucks going. This is sped up. They've sped up the video here. The street they're streaming across the bridge. The lights just went out. Lost ship lost power. You can see that more semis coming across the bridge and the crew up there. Lights flashing on the bridge where the work crew was. Lights come back on the ship briefly for a second and then they're back off. And it heads straight for the pillar. And caught, look at these cars coming across the bridge right there, folks, in this sped up video. And in moments away, in about 30 seconds, not real time, but 30 seconds in the video, about 15 seconds away now, here it comes. And the work crew is still up on the bridge. And watch what happens here in about four seconds right now. 
There it is. It hits the pylon and the whole thing just comes down. Absolutely insane, folks. The Patapsco River currently is blocked as a consequence of this horrific situation in Port of Baltimore. Um, this is heartbreaking. Um, it's shocking to see this sort of thing happen. It is unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. The Port of Baltimore now um, a disaster. The state of Maryland apparently declared a state of emergency in, in response to this, and rightly so. Witnesses describe an earthquake caused by the Baltimore Bridge collapse. They can't believe it's gone. Nor can I, having gone across it so many times. A Baltimore resident described how the horrifying collapse of Francis Scott Key Bridge caused his entire house to feel like it was falling down. The man identified as Sean said the impact of the crash after 1.30 sounded like a big bash of thunder. And then it was just like I said, it felt like an earthquake. Wow. Can't believe there were people on that bridge when it went down. It's crazy. I've been in this neighborhood 57 years. I remember when they started building that bridge and I can't believe it's gone. Very sad for the people crossing and now missing. I pray that Joe doesn't take advantage of this by saying he was part-time iron worker back then and helped build the bridge. Yeah. Biden will blame climate change. He'll blame the infrastructure, collapsing infrastructure. There was no collapsing infrastructure. This was a ship that ran into the bridge and caused it to collapse. Flushing said, I've been across it in rush hour. This is bad enough, but thank Yeah, that was my thought earlier. I said, thank God this didn't happen at rush hour in the morning. People going to and from work or in the afternoon. Um, you see the bridge is always occupied. 34,000 people on average use that bridge every single day. Every single day. Wow. So Biden's already taking advantage of politically. He's already made remarks. Legal experts say that the judgment against Donald Trump's whopping New York fee is excessive under the Constitution. It is excessive. Yep. And so is the slashed. After scoring a major win Monday in the New York civil fraud trial against him, legal experts weighed whether former President Trump can appeal the 454 million judgment as a violation of his constitutional rights. The 45th president and presumptive GOP nominee in the 2024 election had until Monday to pay that and then it was lowered just hours before the deadline. Legal experts told Fox News that one legal avenue Trump and his lawyers could pursue is trying to prove that the whopping half billion to figure violates U.S. constitutional amendment that bans excessive fines. Indeed, Letitia James sued Trump under New York statute that gave broad investigative authority that was designed to protect against consumer fraud. She accused him and his company of inflating the values of properties in order to secure better rates for loans on banks. In this unusual case, the state couldn't prove obvious victims Trump had harmed that incurred major losses. Manhattan Supreme Court Judge Moron Engeron in February sided against Trump and posed what's known as a disgorgement, a legal remedy that requires somebody who profited legally give back any profits made while engaging in legal activity. It is unheard of to seek repayment of over $464 million when there's no identifiable victims and the entities on the other side of all these transactions were sophisticated investors who conducted their own due diligence, said John Malcolm, former assistant U.S. attorney in Atlanta. Notably, bank executives who worked with Trump testified in court that they were happy with their business dealings and even sought additional business with him, whom they verified as a whale of a client. Engering calculated what the banks would have profited from the loans to the Trump company had the values not been inflated over the course of several years. Hmm. It could amount to what the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution bans. The amendment says excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor accrue and unusual punishments inflicted. Yep, and that's exactly what's going on here. The Eighth Amendment is historically only applied to criminal cases, not civil cases. But this is obvious effort to bankrupt by this bizarre whale herself, Letitia James. A disgustingly vile, corrupt attorney general who ran on one premise, she would get Trump. And that's what she's doing. Truth Social goes public and Donald Trump is now worth another $5 billion, folks. <laughs> Truth Social stock price surges on the first day of trading, increasing Trump's fortune. Board members, including Donald Trump and his son and former cabinet members, will decide when he can cash in. Shares of Donald Trump's social media company surged 40% today, boosting the presidential candidate's fortune. The question is, how soon can he tap into his roughly $5.5 billion stake? Yeah, $5.5 billion. Listen, folks, I said in the summer of 2020, Donald Trump would be smart to start a social media company. Did I not say that? I said if somehow he loses the election, he should start a social media company that brings a YouTube, a Twitter, a Facebook, an Instagram-like function to it. Now, of course, Truth Social's never achieved any of that stuff except a Twitter-like function. But nonetheless, that company is now worth a fortune, and he is worth an additional $5.5 billion on top of the $10 billion he already claimed. Ha <laughs> the Trumpster coming out on top. What a good week for him. Yep, Truth Social's parent company began trading Tuesday under the ticker DJT, Donald John Trump. Uh, its, share, its shares soared after the opening bell, giving a market value of $9.5 billion. The gobsmacking price makes Trump approximately his 60% stake worth $5.5 billion. 
Wow, now that price will go up and down with swings in the marketplace and he can't sell stock right away. But he's sitting on a vast fortune of stock. Should have done this long ago. Now, of course, when we all sat around the 1990s and watched Yahoo and Excite and CD Now and Fog Dog and Netscape and all these internet-based companies, right? With no profits, just clicks reach these ridiculous valuations, more valuable than brick and mortar stores, brick and mortar businesses that actually developed and provided services and products. We watched it. Where were the comments about a multi-billion dollar valuation defying logic? We just had some ridiculous international public offerings the past couple of years from internet-based companies. And we don't see CNN talking about the multi-billion dollar valuation defying logic. Well, that's exactly what they do. Donald Trump has a company that makes billions in valuation. And the first thing CNN does is say, well, this defies logic in an effort to poo-poo and crap all over Trump. Trump's Truth Social is now a public company. Experts warn its multi-billion dollar valuation defies logic, according to Matt Egan. For the first time in almost 30 years, part of Donald Trump's business empire has gone public. It's off to a strong start. Trump Media and Technology Group, the owner of struggling social media platform Truth Social, is beginning a long-delayed journey as a public company. Hmm, wow. Wall Street is assigning Trump Media an eye-popping valuation of $14 billion. Well, that's even more than what I just said before. Wow. But they want to poop on it. Visa and MasterCard agree to cap rates, but it's not really going to save you much money here, folks. It's a ridiculous uh, judgment. Card networks could cap credit card interchange fees for five years as part of a settlement. The largest uh, credit card issuing companies, Visa and MasterCard, have agreed to a settlement with merchants that have been suing them for two decades over fees they charge for swiping credit cards. In the deal, the credit card networks and banks will lower the fees that merchants pay to accept credit cards. Now, these range of fees typically uh, are called swipe fees or interchange fees, an average of around 2%. The pack would lower the rate by 0.04 percentage points and keep it there for five years. <laughs> so Visa and MasterCard still come out on top and rip off merchants. Well, inflation is not coming down, folks. It's not coming down. Not fast enough for Joe Biden and his Biden economics. Bidenomics. Yep. Wow. Yep. Inflation is still soaring, not coming down. Mm -hmm. Not happening. Sean Combs, P. Diddy Combs, arrested on sexual trafficking charges after he flew to Aruba. Apparently, he was tipped off on Sunday. He must not have realized that Aruba is not an extradition-free country. He should have gone somewhere else. <laughs> Fed search Pity Diddy Combs properties as part of a sex trafficking probe. Two properties belonging to rapper Sean Diddy Combs in Los Angeles and Miami were searched Monday by federal Homeland Security investigation agents and other law enforcement as part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Wow. Mm. The officials said the search was conducted uh, connected to a sex trafficking investigation by federal authorities in New York. Not clear if he was the target investigation. Hmm. Interesting. But I read earlier that he was arrested. I don't know, is that true? Was he actually arrested when he came back? Elon Musk has lost a lawsuit against a group that um, maliciously denigrated and destroyed his business model. And this is an unacceptable result in a court case. People being allowed to libel others and get away with it. A federal judge dismissed a lawsuit by uh, X against a group of, which monitors online hate speech, concluding that the social media platform's complaint was aimed at punishing criticism of it. U.S. District Judge Charles Breyer's ruling is a win for the Center for Countering Digital Hate, which accused the suit accused of the suit of falsely stating in a public research report that the social media platform is overwhelmed with harmful content. X disagrees with the court's decision and plans to appeal, and you should appeal, because this company undermined their advertising model intentionally, and they have harmed, they've done irreparable harm to X by making lies and publishing lies. The amount of hate that's on Twitter is demonstrably lower than what I saw before Jack Dorsey when he was there. Well, run for the hills, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the latest scare. Are you ready for this? Oh, it's not Rona. Nope, nope. It's not, not H1M1. It's not Zika. It's not Ebola. No, no, no. But bird flu. Oh, we know what bird flu is. We have bird flu all the time. But apparently bird flu is now affecting dairy cattle in Kansas and Texas. Oh, my gosh. That's right. The latest fear mongering going on. News reports widely reporting that dairy cattle in Texas and Kansas have tested positive for bird flu. Milk from dairy cows in Texas and Kansas has tested positive for bird flu. Officials with the Texas animal. Now, how does that happen when milk is pasteurized? It kills those things. How could a virus survive pasteurization? Officials of the Texas Animal Health Commission confirmed the flu virus is the type 
H5N1, known for decades to cause outbreaks in birds and occasionally affect people. It's affecting older dairy cows in states in New Mexico, causing decreased lactation and low appetite. Comes a week after officials in Minnesota announced that goats on a farm where they've been an outbreak of bird flu among poultry were diagnosed with the virus. It's believed to be the first time bird flu, known as highly pathogenic avian influenza, was found in U.S. livestock. Commercial milk supply is safe and risk to people is low, according to the Department of Agriculture. Dairies are required to allow milk from healthy animals to enter the supply and milk from sick animals be diverted or destroyed. Pasteurization also kills viruses and other bacteria. Well, what did I just say? Pasteurization destroys viruses, so why are we even worried about this? At this stage, there's no concern for the safety of the commercial milk supplier or that circumstances pose a risk to consumer health. Really? Then what's the news report about? Listen, zoonotic, zoonotic illnesses are bad mojo. They jump from one species to another. We get stuff from pigs. We get stuff from poultry. It jumps into humans. Not good. So far, the virus fears to be affecting about 10% of lactating dairy cows in affected herds. Doesn't look like anything like the high path influence in bird flocks, but that could change. Bird flu is detected in unpasteurized clinical samples of milk from sick cattle collected in two farms. The virus is also found in a nose and throat swab of another dairy in Texas. Why are we measuring? Why, 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 are we, why are we taking samples of unpasteurized milk and testing it? Why aren't you testing milk that's unpasteurized? Something's going on here. Will Utah women's basketball experience racial hate crimes during the NCAA tournament? Hmm. Lynn Roger, Roberts made the comments after Utah Utes lost to Gonzaga in the NCAAC tournament. NCAA tournament. Utah women's basketball team was hyped to play in yet another tournament. It was an opportunity to show the country what they're all about. But during their stay in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, a place infected by Californians who fled from their leftist state and settled in the lovely state, the gem state of Idaho. Yeah. Um, hmm. During this day, Utah coach Lynn Roberts said the team experienced racism. Because of that, the teams had to change hotels. We had several instances of some kind of racial hate crimes towards our program. Um, incredibly upsetting for all of us, you know. You think in our world in athletics and university settings, it's shocking. But there's so much diversity in a college campus, you're just not exposed to that very often. Hate speech in any form is repugnant, shameful, and must never be tolerated. Gonzaga Athletics said. Um, unfortunately, um, this woman is a dipshit. Um, there were no racial hate crimes committed here. No racial hate crimes committed here. Uh, people said hurtful, shameful things. That's not a racial hate crime. It's not a hate crime. There's no crime against speech. Nope, 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 nope. Not going to happen. Yep. Um, so Utah Deputy Athletic Director Shamel Green, who is black, told KSL.com that the first incident occurred while the team was walking away from the hotel to a restaurant. An unidentified person in a white truck revved the vehicle's engine near the team before yelling the N-word in the team's direction and speeding off. We're all just in shock. We look at each other like... Do we just hear that? Uh, that's not a racial hate crime. That's just an idiot. And it's unfortunate people behave in such a fashion. Anyway, there you have it, folks. There you have it. Are we still live over here? Okay, YouTube, be nice. All right, so P. Diddy, okay, the diddler. <laughs> hey, drunken Yoda. So now they're dumping, where they're dumping all that milk. Bird, cow, flu, flying bovine, <laughs> spreading manure everywhere. <laughs> Biggest virus. Uh, yeah, there you go. Hope none of these cows with monkey swine ever shacked up with <laughs> a pangolin. Uh, they managed to kill enough livestock under the fires in Texas. Yeah, cows must have been less vulnerable. Mm hmm. Yep. Joking Atheist is back. Good to see, good to see you there. Christopher Darbertron says, Good afternoon. Greetings from beautiful Still Bay. Welcome to you. Disar disbarment of these lawfare judges will just push them in MSNBC. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Shame, Chris, you sound very hoarse when you breathe in. The cough. No, it's not a cough. Um, it, the cough is, it's not the cough. Um, yeah, it's, it could be pollen. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, but thank you for your concern. I appreciate that. A bit of cross it in rush hour is bad enough, but let's thank God. Yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. How does that bridge not have protection against ships losing power, getting lost in bad weather? Huh? Seriously? What protection would you have against a cargo ship, a container ship like that? Hey, Brett. Thank you for your long-term membership. Um, thoughts on Mauritania's leader, uh, Khazunai? Um, um, you mean the guy that's that's is being prosecuted? I knew him. Um, uh, they say he's corrupt. I don't know. I didn't have access to see what's going on. Michael Chos says replacing a tank takes a week or two. Replacing a soldier takes 18 years. Biden and his AI teleprompter has no idea. Stand up for USA, fight for your future. Hey, Michael, thank you for joining us here. 
Um, yeah, no, he's um, he's accused of corruption, and um, I think convicted him. I'm a little surprised, um, but you know, it's Africa, so nothing should surprise us. You know, I mean, it's Baltimore corruption. Nothing should surprise you there. Philadelphia corruption. Well, thank you for your 28 months membership, Brett. Um, several months ago, they revealed special body armor not only for women but pregnant women. <laughs> Did they really? Uh, yeah, replacing tank takes well, it takes more than a week, but yeah, in Russia, it takes about a week. Yep. Israel might be half inclined to get involved on behalf of Trump. Yeah, there, there's your election interference coming up. <laughs> Is Japan giving giving Japan planes? What? I don't, I don't understand that. Anyway, um, that's why I'm switching to South Africa as American. South Africa is what will happen to the U.S. if we're allowed to win. Yeah, exactly. The racist will never stop no matter how small the white population is. Exactly. Well, look, the white population is 76% of the country today. And look at how whites are discriminated against. It's astounding. It's absolutely astounding. Have you watched a commercial on television lately? Have you watched a Hollywood program lately? Have you watched my ancestor, Jane Seymour, being portrayed by a black woman when she clearly was not black? Have you seen, um, it all started with Brandy back in the day when Brandy played Cinderella. Brandy, the musical artist, the young girl in her teens, played Cinderella as a black girl. Cinderella is not black. She's from Grimm's Fairy Tales. Anyway. Um, but we hear all along how, how, how unfair things are, really. 12% of the population, and they fill up 90% of our commercials. Where are the Armenians represented in those commercials? Where are the Navajos? Where are the Cherokee and the Choctaw represented in those? Where are the German-Americans represented? They're not. They're non-existent. You're either gay or you're black, occasionally mixed race. Or now a bunch of Asians showing up, far in, in excess of the 3% of the population. They are, too. Yeah, look, I don't really care, but the point is that these people whine the other way. The people who are race hustlers, not, not Asians and blacks and Navajos, but the race hustlers will whine for decades about misrepresentation. And I was just thinking last night, I said, you know, because uh, of my, my Roku device that showed up for the uh, Roku channel, the Donna Reed Show. And I'm like, you know, I grew up hearing all this nonsense about how women didn't have TV. There was the Betty White Show. There was the Donna Reed Show. There was the Mary Tyler Moore Show. There was Alice. The list goes on and on. The same with black TV shows, What's Happening, Good Times, The Jeffersons, 227. The list goes on and on and on. The whole network, the UPN network, set up for black folks exclusively, with the exception of the Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, the Enterprise. That was the only show on UPN that wasn't a black show. They're all black shows. Everyone hates Chris. Remember that? It's nonsense. So sick of the nonsense. Andrea Fick, looking for a platform. Who's looking for a platform? It's this uh, MK receiving arms via Mozambique late night shift. Where are you getting that from? <clears throat> Ever notice the delay between Chris and the chat while watching live? Go to the playback speed, push it two times, or fast forward twenty seconds. Yeah, no, it's because YouTube is 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 you know sanctioning my channel. They just keep the thumb on it all the time. Like I'm complaining about YouTube in a while, and there's no point in doing it because it doesn't change anything. But it is a fact. It is a fact. All right, so um, Erica's going to bed. Um, Biden delivers remarks about the bridge. Yeah, no, I saw that. I didn't want to watch it. Patrick's membership. Thank you, Patrick. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Even my progressive neighbors are talking about the misrepresentation in ads. Yeah, yeah. 12% of the population are black. Look at your commercials. Look at who's playing Alexander Hamilton. Look at who's, you know, it's, look, it's, it's, it's just silly. It's so obvious. So obvious. What about Snow White? Yeah, well, they'll go after Snow White, I'm sure, at some point. Well, because Sleepy, Dopey, and Sneezy are just rude. They're insulting. They harm, they harm their psyche. Yeah, and she's white, so that can't be accepted. Uh, several black South Africans work in Carnival cruise ships. Some of my family and step family expressed safety concerns for me. It all, it all takes. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, EFF members aren't bright enough to secure positions working for Carnival Cruise Line. You know, these we're not talking about high information voters there. Rewriting history for new generations. Exactly, Mike. Again, so I, let me tell you this story, folks. When I worked at the War College, every summer we would have interns, and they came largely from Ivy League schools around the country like uh, Bucknell and uh, Harvard and Princeton and places like that. They would come to the War College 
Some from the area who lived around here would come home. They they would intern there at the War College. Others came here and stayed here to intern from around the country, mostly here on the East Coast. And these are undergraduates and a few graduates. And these are students that are at prestigious institutions, ostensibly amongst the best educated in our country. When I came back to America in 2015 from Ethiopia, of course, we had the Freddie Gray nonsense, the hands up lie. We had um, we had the um, the the um, what's the guy. The, the, the Ferguson, Missouri thing with the hands up, then Freddie Gray, and then um, down there in Florida uh, where Zimmerman was, you know, Trayvon Martin, all this nonsense going on in America. And most of that was just lies, all those stories, which were, you know, and then, of course, George Floyd came later on that nonsense. But, but in the summertime, these students would be talking about racial issues. That's interesting. I like to talk about race and you know, people and what's going on in society. So I'd go down to the cafeteria and I'd work down there because it's, you know, it's more comfortable to sit down in the cafeteria and work rather than sit in my office, which is kind of confined. And um, I'd get a little something to eat and I'd, I'd do my work and these students would be there talking and, and invariably they'd talk about these issues. And you should have heard the way they talked about it. And so I would just ask them, I'd say, what do you think that now at the time in 2015, the last figure we had was from 2010 census and 13.5% of Americans were black or mixed race, black. Um, so I said, what do you think the percentage of black Americans are in this country? And I presume they thought it was higher than it actually was based on the way they were talking about things. And I would get 45%, 40%, 32%, 28%, 30%, 40%. I'm like, you do realize that black Americans comprise just 13.5% of America's total population. And this was when we were below 300 million. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now, there are reasons why, but that's the percentage. And today, black Americans, as a consequence of the massive criminal Asian, criminal alien invasion of America, have been reduced even further. Black Americans now represent just 12% of our total population. So about 45 million people. Yeah, but they represent 85-90% of our commercials <laughs> and our television programming. Hey, Sue Walsh, welcome to you. Kurt Ferhova is back. Good to see you again. Did not have problems at last cruise. Everything's fine. Yeah, exactly, Brett. It's nothing going to be wrong with cruise. You'll be fine. I always suspect that census has a low return and data was accurate. I think it was misreported then. Misreported what way? That it was too low or too high? No, it's it's 45 million. Um, most of America is not black. I mean, yeah, it's, there are exceptions in places like Philadelphia, of course, uh, New York, Chicago, these urban centers, and in rural areas and parts of the South. But most of the country is not black. It's a small percentage population. Do you think the trial stuff should be tried by judge or juries? My family likes the Southern system. No, I don't like the system where judges do it. That's just simply wrong. Um, judges can be bought easily. Judges are not perfect. We see the harm that judges do. I mean, look look at the Supreme Court. Plessy versus Ferguson institutionalized separate but equal, which violates the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause and doesn't treat people fairly. And that was allowed to continue from 1898 until 1954 when Brown versus the Board of Education overturned that lunacy of separate but equal. So for 56 years, people suffered. Entire lifetime for many people. Courts get it wrong. Roe versus Wade was an unconstitutional act which allowed for the death of over 50 million Americans in the womb. Sanctioned by the federal government. An authority that the federal government lacks according to the 10th Amendment to the Constitution. That power is reserved to the states and or the people, respectively, not to the federal government. Roe versus Wade was finally overturned by the Dobbs decision and the left lost their freaking mind in 2022. It didn't change anything. Eventually it could lead to changes, and it did lead to a change in Texas. I was asked a question about abortion yesterday by a lady who's a registered Republican. She didn't like my answer. I said, don't, don't run off. You didn't let, let me finish. And, you know, it's, um, I'm, I was honest with you. I'm not going to lie to you about my position on it. I'm not going to lie. That's, just, that's what politicians do. I'm a patriotic American. I have no reason to tell you fairy tales. We can disagree on things. Anyway, so I don't think I got her vote. <laughs> Not often will you see a shirt that has no print. What are you talking about, Sue? What shirt has no print? Oh, see me in a shirt that has no print. Well, I have a shirt that has a print on, but it's under here. It's my Vegas shirt, which I had on yesterday. <laughs> Stanley Cup champions. Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, no, um, I put this shirt on to have a more professional look for the video that I did about Mr. Apatan's trip to Orania. Um, yeah, so that's why. Sorry, I, I didn't see your full text there. Now I see the full comment. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, so it's underneath, yeah. <laughs> Parents just think that judges are less swayed by juries and 
Yeah. Um, yeah, the problem is that, uh, so when a jury makes a determination, a judge can set aside a verdict. That can be done. It's been done in the past. Uh, when, a jury, when, when, a, when a jury makes a decision, it can be appealed. When a judge makes a decision, you're appealing to other judges. <laughs> it's just, you know, that's, no, our, our system of jury, it's constitutional. So I don't know why anybody wanted to take it away. It's in the Constitution. Trial by your peers. Simple as that. Hey, Ron's in from Bluefontein. Uh, joking atheist ran out of text. Uh, UN has ordered ceasefire in Gaza. What happens when Israel ignores the ruling? Uh, do you have any thoughts? The UN, a dog without teeth. Uh, nothing will happen. The UN has no authority. What are they? Are, do you, the, the next step will be for the UN to take action against Israel. Now, the jackass Joe administration of Joe Biden, which has betrayed Israel, is not going to take up arms against Israel. That is simply not going to happen. Not going to happen. So the only way something happens here is the UN has a resolution in which they authorize the use of force against Israel. But Israel is complying with the United Nations Charter. Israel has a right to self-defense. They were invaded and attacked by thousands of Hamas terrorists on October 7th. They have a right to exist. They're a member of the United Nations. So, you know, this is all bogus nonsense. Linda Thomas-Greenfield at the direction of the Biden regime abstained and allowed this thing to pass because they're political cowards. The reason they did that was for domestic political gain, not for the safety and security of Palestinians or Israelis. Linda, Tom Green, Linda Thomas Greenfield, whom I know, and the Biden regime did that to protect the Democratic Party so it can retain power in November. That's what it's all about, folks. They don't care about Palestinians. They don't care about Jews. They don't care about Christians. They don't care about Israel. They don't care about any of that. It's all just a bunch of grifters who want to retain their hold on power. If they cared about what was happening here, then they would have condemned Hamas in the strongest terms. They would have taken action to help Israel eliminate Hamas in October. Juries appear as not random village idiots. <laughs> Great. Israel doesn't need USA to send troops. They do ever need weapons, but they can buy them from other countries. Um, reminding you of super... Oh, because I took the shirt. <laughs> when do you think the IDF will strike Rafa? Uh, Garrett, it's a good question. Um, I'm sure it'll be soon. I'm sure it'll be soon. Would you want a bunch of people get 30% of school sitting in your jury? Well, we don't have a bunch of people get 30% of their school. That's South Africa already. The vast majority of Americans are high school graduates and are literate. Let's take a look at that. Um, percentage of high school graduates in the U.S. The last data we have available for it was over 90%. Yep, over 90%. So, 90.6, yeah, 90, yeah, 90, so nine, about nine, almost 91% in 2020. Oh, 2022, 91% in 2022. Now, in 1950, or 1960, the rate was in the 30s, low th or the high 30s, about 40%. So, we've gone about 40% to 90% are high school graduates. Now, the question is, <laughs> what is the education level of high school graduates in 2024 versus 1950? Probably a lot lower. But no, we don't have 30 percenters, no. And um, fast facts about high school graduation rates, okay? Let me see. Um, percentage of, it's about 30%, I think. Oh, that's not what I want. What is this? Um, percentage of college graduates in the U.S. Well, this says 44% uh, of Americans age 25 and older have attended college and completed the degree program. That's much higher than I thought. 35% of those have a bachelor's degree. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. That's not right. So let's take a look at this. This is a bit higher than I expected. Hmm. People currently enrolled in college are playing at 10 college. And, um, hmm. Anyway, what's this? I don't want that. Anyway, and then master's degree, 13% of Americans have a master's degree, and that includes me. And then PhD, the number gets even lower. What percentage is PhD? That's two percent. So we go from I don't I don't believe that forty four percent. I think it's about thirty five percent. Yeah. 
Yeah, 35% have a, a bachelor's degree. That's what it is. It's 44% of have attended college. 35% of adult Americans have a bachelor's degree. 35%. 13% have a master's degree and 2% have a PhD. 2%. So 2%. Do you know how many PhDs that is? That's over 6 million people with PhDs in this country. <laughs> 13%. It's over 40 million people with master's degrees in this country. 35% of adults. Ooh, that's a huge percentage for a bachelor's degree. Yep. Anyway, that's that's not what I'm looking for. Got the wrong window here now. Let me get back to the, my correct window. There we go. All right, we're back now. All right, so 1930s still had a large percent of agriculture industrial. Yes, that's true. 50% literacy and numeracy in certain cities and counties in the USA. Well, that's true, Keith, but it doesn't outweigh the fact that uh, 90% are graduates and have met literacy standards. Yeah, including Dr. Jill Biden. That's correct. She has a PhD in educational services. What I find sickening is the UN is yet to condemn the sec. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and they've already condemned the terrorist attack in Russia. Yep. Yeah, exactly, Joe Keith. Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. Yep. Brett says, my family members that think that Iranian has been allowed to stay and not get banned or sued because, what about it? It would have investigated every single pro-Hamas protester. Hmm. Hmm. Dr. Jill Biden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. By the way, folks, I've had a couple of really good days here with the solar panels. Wow, my goodness. Um so this week uh, on the 21st, I had 42.9. On the 24th, I had 43. On the yesterday, I had 42.6. So each of those days over 40 kilowatt hours. And today, it was looking good earlier, but it's slowed down a bit now. So 13.6. The sun isn't out as strong as it was a little while ago. There must be some clouds out there. Yeah, but uh, rapidly approaching a record for months. Still got about another 17 kilowatt hours to beat last month, which is the best month so far. My son is part of a PhD, his doctorate is from University of Fort Worth in Houston. Never heard of that university. I'm not familiar with it. If South Africa had a jury system, Iran would not exist today or get massively sued. Um, sued for what? There's no violation of the law. That's why judges can set aside um, verdicts. I mean, Iran has broken no laws. The South African Constitution explicitly allows for the existence of places like Iran and the Inganyama Trust. Yep. My eye looks like it's red now. Or you got something in it. Hmm. Yep. Hendo got wet. Must be in the UK. <laughs> Minds me, I wanted to ask you if you were selling excess power to the grid. Yes, in fact, I am, ladies and gentlemen. So you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Last year, in fact, let me look up what I paid last year, okay? That's here. Hang on a second. Um, I need to go over here to this drive, to this folder. And let me see if I've got last year's payments on here. Yeah, 2023 for March. 2023 March. Okay, my electricity bill last year was $103.79. In February, it's $130. $103.79 is what I paid for electricity last year. Okay. With the solar panels, you ready for this? You ready for this? This year, I paid $10. $90 less for the electricity. Can you believe that? $90 less. So I, let's see, here's my bill. I just paid my bill yesterday. It's not due for a bit, but I paid it yesterday because it's so small. I can afford to pay it. Um, I um, had 522 kilowatt hours that came in that I used. Um, and then 383 credit. And then I banked, the first time I banked any kilowatt hour. So 139 hours of credit banked now for a payment in May. That was beyond what I used. So um, my bill was $10. I had a $67.80 credit for 383 hours that they used towards paying down my electric bill. Yep. Yep. So there you go, $10. $10. Now, Lorraine, in the interest of full disclosure, um, that's not my total cost, okay? We got to keep this in mind. We got to keep this in mind. But, I mean, as the summer months come in, we get longer days of sunshine, more intense uh, photovoltaic uh, output, I will see much larger days, hopefully, and um, unless the laws are not raining, and then I'll continue to bank credit. But, but let's be fair here. That's what I'm paying the utility, but the panels cost something. I'm not paying. I didn't buy the panels. But I am paying a monthly fee for the people that installed it, so it's ninety bucks. So, um, 
about the same bill as I had last year when you look at it that way. Um, anyway, but over time, the panels become my property after they're paid off, but they're not on my credit history because I didn't make the loan. Um, so yeah, and then when I bank stuff, if I bank enough hours and get paid every year in May, this year there won't be that much. There's 139 there, whatever I get this month and whatever I get in May, I'll get paid out a small check. But then next year, if I'm still here, a whole year of this banking credit for June, July, August, September, October, when we had lots of sun, and then the slow months, and then come back again to April and May, uh, and then bank it again, then I will probably receive enough money, if things go well, that will not only pay for my bill being $0 every month to the electric company, but also I'll make enough that'll pay for that $90 per month, and I'll wind up paying nothing for my electricity if things go well. If things go well, so... Uh, Joe Gandy says, wow, that's amazing. Well done. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it is pretty amazing. Just $10. And um, yeah, so this next month, because these 40 kilowatt hour days, I only burn 17 per day on average. These, uh, these kilowatt days, I'll probably uh, have a $0 bill. Now, I don't have a perfectly flat because you have to pay $10 for the connection. You have to pay to be connected to the grid. So it's $10 per month for the grid. Um, and then um, I also pay for insurance for the power lines from the street to the house because I have to have insurance. That's six dollars or outrageous, six fifty a month. Um, so there's always going to be that charge. But the credit I got takes it down to nothing. So yeah, yep. So George says my comment was blocked and removed, so I guess I can't say anything. Well, we didn't say anything. That was YouTube. None of my moderators did that. None of my honors, so they took it down, so. Yeah, Lorraine, what a savings, that is pretty cool. Uh, I still actually gotta pay the 90 some bucks, but um, again, the amount of money I make on banking stuff will probably make a big impact on that, and that'll be nice. Uh, Brett says, I've seen many juries get it right, and judges make mistakes too, so I'm indifferent judges. I'm not indifferent. Um, the Constitution guarantees a trial by jury, and the reason we did that is so we didn't have corrupt royal judges deciding people's fates, like England, so yeah to mention the value added to your property gains. Yeah, no, I, some people say that solar panels make your property more valuable. I don't know about that, but yeah. But anything to reduce my bills, it's nice. I wish I could do the same thing with my gas bill. <laughs> Just also saving electricity to solar panels. Cool, there in Western Cape. How is the election going, Chris? Well, Hendo, um, I've got events tonight and tomorrow. I had a big event on Sunday and I uh, was able to reach well over a thousand people um, at a racetrack. I was interviewed during the intermission. And um, when I was out knocking doors yesterday, I actually ran into somebody that was at the racetrack and he said, yeah, no, we, uh, we, we heard you and uh, we're interested in your campaign. So I gave them um, some information and they seemed inclined to vote for me and also was able to leave a yard sign in their yard. So it was pretty nice. So yeah, yep, yeah. uh, that went well. But um, I hit a neighborhood in which um, the vast majority of people are actually home when I visited the past two trips to this neighborhood. And I was able to put out about 30 yard signs. I didn't even ask everybody. I just asked them for certain places. I said, you might have to put a yard sign out. So I got about 30 yard signs out. And yesterday's visit, I was finding that people knew who I was because of the race way that I went to. Plus, they saw my signs and they recognized my name. So now they've got a face to go with the name. And hopefully, they'll go vote on the primary. But tonight, there's an event at a church. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. They've invited the Democratic candidate too. The rules are kind of hokey from my perspective. You get a very short amount of time to answer questions. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and then tomorrow, um, there's another event, and that one's here locally. This other one, I got to go further down the road tonight. So those things are happening. Uh, much more happening coming around. The, um, the tough part now for me is that um, it's, uh, it's very time consuming and lots going on. So all electric, no gas except propane. Use portable solar backup. Okay. I don't know about a YouTube channel link. I don't know where it's going to be. Uh, I'll have to send it if they give it to me. Um, yeah, so I don't have that information. So, um, yeah, that's, um, I, 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 yeah, so I just found out a short while ago that it's actually going to be streamed. I didn't know it was going to be streamed. So, in South Africa, a blended household power system likely adds over 150,000 to the average property. Wow. Wow. Yeah, excuse me. Solar geezers, huh? Well, we had solar geezers in Botswana. Our state rep doesn't even have a website. What are you talking about? Well, I have a website. I'm not even a representative. <laughs> it wasn't easy, but I got it up. Oh, give them this YouTube channel. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. 
Well, let me do something else here real quick so that people see it, because I don't think a lot of people have seen this. So, <coughs> so here's um, my campaign. His it. What the heck was that? <laughs> That opened up a whole bunch of videos simultaneously. I had to turn that off. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that was weird. I was looking for the screen, but it wasn't it. So <laughs> uh, there's the screen. Wow. Okay, so there's the campaign website. Yep, battle-tested servant leader with incredible record of success at all levels across America and the globe. Tackling issues that matter. So there's some pictures of me. That's my heifer. Um, took her to the fair. Yep. And then that's me after the Gulf War when I came back. You see my blonde mustache there. <laughs> yep. And then this is in Chichen Itza. This is the end of the Gulf War. Wadi al -Batin. That's Iceland. That's Italy during the Rugby World Cup entering from France, and that's when I was a young soldier. Back in Bad Kreuznach in 1987, I think that picture is from. So 87, we have been 22 there, before I went back to college. Might have been 86, I was 21. Yep, dress blues, sergeant, the 8th Infantry Division color guard. Uh, no, I'm not allowed to stream it myself, um, and I've got to pay attention to what I'm doing, so, yeah. But we'll find out. If I can get the information, I'll get it to you guys, okay? I'll put it through the WhatsApp and Telegram groups, okay? Yep. Yeah, there's the link Hendo just put up for that website. Thank you for that, Hendo. That is the campaign website. Um, yeah, feel free to go there and visit it just, you know, out of support of solidarity to help me out because the more visits I get there, the more attention it'll get. Um, so, I mean, even if you're not an eligible voter, you can certainly go check it out. So I do appreciate that. Anyway, by the way, for my, um, uh, where was that? Bud Kreisnack is what? <laughs> yep. Prisoner becomes live bait. What's that? What are you talking about there, Sensual? Okay. Anyway, don't forget, folks, I've done a video. I've got to edit it, and it'll be posted here shortly after this broadcast, probably within the hour, about um, about that uh, documentary that Mr. Um, Adapatan did there on Aranya. Uh, watch the video comment. It looks like you stand a proper chance to win this. What do you think your chances are? I think my chances are good, joking atheists, but the challenge is the following. Um Trump and Biden have already won the their their nominations for their party, and so a lot of people aren't going to go to the primary. They just won't because we don't need to go unless there'll also be some people that go, well, I'm going to go to vote for Trump. So I'm kind of torn about what that means. Um, my predictions as an analyst about how many people are needed for this race was predicated on the race still being competitive at this stage, and so it might be lower than I thought. And that's why my approach, I think, is helping by knocking on people's doors. Other candidates are doing that too, but I'm going to all register Republicans and people that don't even vote. And some people say that's a waste of your time. But the number of people I've run into, because I'm a veteran, because of my service, and because of who I am when they listen to me, um, they seem motivated to go vote. So I may be able to bring a number of people to the polls who don't usually go. I've gotten some encouraging signs the past few days. A very lovely note was sent to some people who are helping me, talking about, let me see if I can find this. Um, let me see if I can find this one note. Hang on a second here. If I can read this note to you. All right, so let me see. Um, real quick here. Come on, where's that? Um, here it is. So, uh, thank you. This is a note sent from one person to another person. So thank you for showing such kindness and support for Chris Wyatt. He is one unique individual. I've been in politics for decades and have never met anyone more qualified to be our representative than him. Uh, you and your spouse are two great Americans. So that's something that was sent from one person to another. And then um, I received a note from one of my volunteers yesterday. And he said, my aunt talked to a woman today and she said her whole family is voting for you. My response was awesome. Hopefully they have 10 adult children. <laughs> so I get 10 votes. <laughs> you get my point there. <laughs> 
It's a way to see the area of Pennsylvania you're involved in, maybe a district map. Would, yeah, sure, sure. Um, absolutely. A drunken Yoda, I can show you that. The 92nd district. Let me find a way to bring that up on the screen here. So um, I need to go to here. Uh, there we go. And maps. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, huh. well, that's not going to work so well that way. Let me, yeah, here, I'll do this. Okay, so. All right, so I got to bring it over here. Okay, so. All right, so here it is. Um, the red is the 92nd district. It's weird how Pennsylvania's districts are numbered. They're not exactly consecutive here. You know, some are, but most aren't. So I'm surrounded by the 196, the 193rd, the 87th, the 88th, the 104th. Um, yeah. So that's the 92nd district. The eastern border is the Susquehanna River. The southern border on the eastern side to where it bends down is the Conewago Creek. And the northern border, most of it where it's all squiggly, is the Yellow Breaches Creek. So that's central Pennsylvania. That doesn't really help you out so much, but this will help out a bit better. So that's the district, and Harrisburg is immediately at the top of that district. So let me see if I can get this to come up without it, because it likes to pick both screens when I do this. Okay, so I need to do this. Okay, so now I got it. Okay, so now, um, but I need to be able to see that screen, so shoot, that isn't going to help me. So, all right, I need your help here, folks, because, wait a second, that's not what I wanted. Okay, our... A lot of stupid antennas. <laughs> yeah, so says the pilot. <laughs> I don't know. Are you able to see? Oh, that's not right. Are, are you seeing the map now? I think you should be seeing the map of the district. You can see the Susquehanna River to the left, and you'll see Three Mile Island out there in the Susquehanna River. And to the very north, just above the district, is Harrisburg. So there are no major cities in this district. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Are you guys able to see that? Yeah, the Susquehanna is an Indian name. That's correct. That is correct. York City is located to the southeast corner there, well below my district. But uh, this district here is uh, very um, large, peri-urban geographically. And um, yeah, so you can see I have a lot of roads to travel. It takes me about 30 minutes driving back roads to get from where I'm at in the west side of the district to the east side of the district. Maybe 30 minutes, half hour. And uh, yeah, so lots of space to travel, lots of roads to hit, lots of rural places. So anyway, that's uh, that's the district, the 92nd legislative district for those who are curious. So why is this not? Come on. All right. So there you go. All right. So I got it. Okay. You were able to see it. That's good news. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Susquehanna is a, an Indian name. That is correct. Um, yeah. York is not, obviously. It's named after House of York. We have Lancaster on the other side of the Susquehanna River, and we have York here. So the House of Lancaster, the House of York, which, of course, fought each other in the War of the Roses. The two minor league baseball teams, the Atlantic League of Professional Baseball, the Lancaster Barnstormers and the York Revolution, play each other, and that's traditionally called the War of the Roses because when they play each other, they're the House of York and Lancaster. Most Pennsylvanians don't even get it. Some do. Well, Hendo, it's one thing to walk in a neighborhood where houses are. It's another thing to walk a quarter mile to one house, a mile to the other house, hoping somebody will be home. You, you burn a lot of time. So you've got to find places where you can meet people. So tonight is one of those opportunities, and hopefully um, I'll get to meet a lot of people and see how it goes. Um, yep. Erica is going to dinner. All right. Well, it's about that time for me to wrap up, too, so I can get the other thing. And you have New York. What about New York? Uh, well, Chris cranked the old V8 donkey. <laughs> um, Flesh and um, we have primaries to select candidates for parties. That's why it's confusing for people that aren't Americans. Um, we have a primary system or caucus. It depends how party sides do it. In Pennsylvania, both political parties uh, rely on the primary. The state conducts the election on behalf of the parties. They put their candidates forward and then the candidate is selected. So... Um, I'm running the Republican primary against um, opponents. So let me see if I can find this real quick. Um, actually, let me just do it this way. It's a lot easier. Uh, there was something I downloaded earlier. Let's see if it's here. There it is. So this is tonight. It's a candidate forum. And 
Okay, actually, it's streaming. I've got the link. Okay, I got the link. I'm sorry. It's right here. It's right here. All right, there you go, folks. I'm sorry. There it is. So here it is. I had the link all along. Shame on me. I didn't realize that. So if you want to watch this tonight, um, it's at 7, so it's going to be 1 a.m. for South Africans. But if you want to watch the stream, here it is. There you go. So tonight at 7 p.m., um, Lighthouse Baptist Church of Greater York, and it will be streaming live on lighthousebap.org, lighthousebap.org. So um, five Republicans and one Democrat. See where they stand, know the issues. All right, there you go. There you go. So anyway, <clears> hmm. <throat> so that's tonight, um, and that's the link. There you go. Well, drop the link. I'm gonna have to type it. It's not. It's, that's an image. It's an image. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to type it. So I'm oh, happy to do that. But I mean, it's it's an image, man. It's not. It's not. It's not text I can copy. So I'm gonna have to come over here now and go. Well, let me just go find the site. So let me see. Uh, Light House. B B A P dot com. Let's see if that works. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Copy. Okay. Okay. I don't know why it says that link, but I don't see anything on there. But that's the link. So I've been there. There you go. There's the link if you want to check it out tonight. If you guys want to come support me, that's fine. Just don't get in an argument if any of the trolls show up. Lake near the border. Is that a big lake? Um, which border, George? There's a lake in the south. Um, Gifford Pinchot State Park is down there. Um, that's a big lake. It's not big to me. I've seen far bigger lakes. Um, and then there's the Susquehanna on the eastern boundary. So, yep. No, I did address it light rain. I'm not allowed to live stream it myself. So, yep. Plus, I'll be using my phone to keep track of my time because you only get so much time to answer people. Did I print that out yet? Let me see if I printed out the instructions. So, uh, what's going on here? What have we got here? Well, that's notes for me. That's a bill. And this is for tonight. Well, that's a phone call I got to make. Okay, so I'm printing out stuff today. So, this is, um, there will be a stage. Okay, each candidate will be seated. They'll have one minute to respond to each question. Uh, next question will start with candidate two. And, okay, so you get one minute. Pfft. That's one minute to answer questions. Wow. Wow. That's not a long time. You got to be able to think fast on your feet. Sue says, the world needs more people like yourself. I wonder if you have children, if it's too personal to understand. Um, yeah, so that's not something I talk about, but thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Are they required to... I, I don't know. I mean, that isn't clear. They don't tell us that. The audience will be on the floor of the gym, seated in fold-up chairs, have six tables, one for each can to use before and after the form. You can provide your palm cards and other literature to people who may want to pick it up. Doors may be open at 6.15. So we'll see how it goes. Um, Drunken Yoda says, I watch most likely. Wishing you the best. Thing. Thank you, Drunken Yoda. It's very kind of you. Appreciate that. Uh, listen, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because, I mean, I don't need this. I don't. That's a statement of fact. What I mean by that is that, uh, once again, like my entire life, I'm stepping into the fray for the better and for the good of all. I mean, I served in uniform. Yes, I received a salary and yes, I got to travel the world, but I also got shot at and had artillery exploding around me and lived in horrible circumstances and missed a lot of very important events in my life and my family's life as a consequence of being in the military. It was a huge sacrifice, but I did it for 36 years because it was important. I was supporting defending the constitution of the greatest nation in the history of humankind. And that was a mission that I was on. And that mission was not just for Americans, it was for people all over the world, defending Europe from communism, protecting Africans from terrorism, development, helping Africans, overcoming HIV, Ebola, and other afflictions, building schools and clinics. I did it because there was a reason for doing it, and it wasn't about craven power. It was about making a change, like the progressives always like to say, but making a change for the better in the human condition. Then when I retired from active duty military, I could have just gone off and lived in New Zealand. <laughs> or lived in you know, Bavaria or moved to Maine or Wyoming and just said to heck with it, you know? But I started a consultancy to try to get businesses invest in Africa. That hasn't gone particularly anywhere. And I diverted after starting that because of the COVID lockdown and started doing broadcasting to inform the world about what's going on and get people involved, inspire people to take action, to be part of something. Something you don't usually hear from a conservative, but yes, that's what I'm doing. So when I saw that nobody was on the ballot to be the judge of elections after the debacle of 2020, I was like, that's shocking. So I wrote myself down, 
on the primary ballot in the spring and I didn't get elected. I didn't get on the ballot. And I found out later on, you need 10 people to vote for you. Then you wind up on the ballot. So anyway, um, I, um, ran for judge elections in a right election for a very thankless task, a job that people don't want. And I became the judge of elections and have done four consecutive elections. And um, it's a thankless job. I'm there, I'm starting at five o'clock in the morning on election day. And I usually finish my day at 11.30 at night if things go well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a huge responsibility and I stepped into the fray. And once again, I'm stepping in the fray here. This is what I mean by I don't need it. I don't have to do it. Wes says, thanks for the stream, all the best. Well, you're welcome. Mega too. Okay. Thank you, George. Um, people are needed to step up. You're a dedicated citizen. Definitely will be watching. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Take action. Strong message. Exactly, RB. I mean, that's, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't play around. Um, take it seriously and um, you should be responsible and treat people fairly. That's what it's all about. All right. 7 p.m. local Pennsylvania time. That's correct. Unless I'm missing something, the church you're at tonight is running their calendar one day ahead, date wise, showing Monday as the 26th. Huh? The events tonight, I know it's tonight because I got called. <laughs> I got called earlier. Okay. Let's see what they've got here for events. Uh, I don't even see this thing listed here as an event. Nope. I'm not sure what you mean by they've got things. So anyway, but yeah, that's the place. Lighthouse Baptist Church. Okay. Uh, you may not need it. But if not you, then who and well? Well, my point with not needing it is that um, I was asked by one of the um, one of the people signed my petition early in the when you have to get signatures to get on the ballot, and the gentleman said, "Would you take a pay cut?" I said, "When I'm elected to the legislature?" He goes, "Yeah." So I'm talking. About. I said, "Well, let me put it this way: um, I pay thousands of dollars in property tax, fuel tax, and." sales tax to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania every year. And the road outside my development is chock full of potholes. So I'm not getting much return on my investment there. So as far as I'm concerned, you want to you wanna cut the salary of the legislators? I'm fine with that. I'm not going to the legislature for the salary. That's not why I'm going there. All the interest of full disclosure, the Pennsylvania legislatures are among the best compensated in the country. Um, I'm not going there for that reason. I have the means to survive on my own without that. And, you know, Obviously, I'm okay. I'm able to put together stuff and, and, you know, and through the generosity of people when I go to South Africa, providing accommodation and helping me out, setting meetings up and stuff like that, I'm able to take trips like that uh, for folks. But um, yeah, no, so I'm not doing it for that reason. I don't know that my peers or, or my opponents are doing it for that reason or not, but I do know this is that also you won't see me go into the legislature and be a permanent political class person. I have no desire to spend the rest of my adult life in government. This country is in jeopardy. We're at risk. And I spent my entire adult life defending a constitution which is being stamped on and crapped on daily by Harrisburg and by Washington, D.C. Now, ironically, the person who's in the legislature right now for this district is a great conservative. And replacing her doesn't change anything other than the person that's in the seat and if they have the same drive and ambition, or not ambition, drive and motivation, which is, which is what I have. Um, again, I make coffee nervous and that'll be my job in Harrisburg to make coffee nervous. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, all right. So that's it. Time to close up. My hip is starting to bother me sitting here. So thank you all so much. Be sure to hit the like button. We appreciate that. And we'll catch you here tomorrow. Um, we've got, um, Wednesdays with the Colonel tomorrow with Ronaldo potentially. And I guess he can tell us that he's on the national list for member parliament. So that'll probably be our topic tomorrow. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, folks, term limits to get live. Yeah, no, I uh, term limits is definitely something real. So, yep. Yeah. All right, thank you all very much. Take care of yourselves, and we'll catch you next time. If you're able to watch tonight, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and have a lovely evening. Um, and look for my other video. It'll be out shortly. Cheers, everybody, on the Aranya thing.